we're gonna start by drawing a main guiding line that's gonna guide the shape, the path of our animation. The second thing I'm gonna do is put in a rough spacing concept to try to think about the position of the frames. And basically I'm looking for the slow areas and the fast areas. And this is gonna be a rough uh, first pass that actually I'm not going to stick with 100% but it's just giving me an, an idea of where I'm going to be stacking a lot of frames. Now the third step is I'm gonna draw another line that matches this line that is gonna give me a bit of structure to draw on. And I'm also gonna think about this idea of the paper flipping. Uh, so I'm basically trying to draw a ribbon that looks half decent here as a guide to draw each of the uh, drawings that we're gonna do of all these pieces of paper. Now I'm just gonna go into the middle of the scene and create a new keyframe and just kind of jump into the middle and get a first drawing going of what this paper is gonna look like. And I'm taking my background layers and going into the frame panel under color effects and choosing alpha just to turn that down a little bit. I still want it to be there as a guide, uh, but I'm just turning down that bottom layer ever so slightly. And now it's just really about matching up with this initial spacing that I thought was gonna work. So I'm just going in and doing some quick drawings of the paper uh, in each of these poses. So you can be pretty rough with these drawings. I am gonna have to go back later and do a little bit of cleanup, but right now I just wanna see if my general sense of the timing and the blocking is gonna work. And basically I'm gonna focus on the slower areas first. So the areas in which I want it to kind of slow down into these arcs, I'm gonna go in there and quickly kind of duplicate my drawings and add a couple more frames and then see how that's looking with these more spaced out areas. Now, initially I thought I could get away with it moving really quickly through this looping part of it, but as I began to work with the animation, I realized I'm actually gonna need a lot more drawings to sell the looping effect. So if you wanna do this kind of loop-de-loop -loop with the paper, you actually need to make that area one of the slow points. And so that's gonna mean more drawings to really smooth out that looping feeling and give the effect that the paper is really kind of flipping over and that we're seeing the back of it. So once I realized that my original spacing wasn't gonna work, I went in here and just kind of in a linear fashion started to add some more kind of breakdown frames to see if it could look a little bit more smooth uh, and also kind of thinking about the spacing here where now I was realizing this was, it was actually gonna need to slow down a bit. I was trying to figure out how much should it slow down into this into this looping section of the animation. And basically what I realized is I needed to kind of keep it a bit linear and just get enough frames in there so it doesn't look like the illustration is just kind of flipping over, that there really need to be enough drawings in there to kind of smooth that out. So from here, I'm just moving forward and getting some more uh, of these paper illustrations in playing a little bit with the perspective that maybe it's laying down a little bit flatter. I'm using this kind of S curve on each end uh, and I'm jumping back and forth between this looping section and this, this faster uh, out section here. And as I'm working through it, realizing I just need more frames than I or originally thought I would to make it look a little bit smoother and a little bit better. But I think the biggest focus here is getting enough frames in there to make it feel smooth, realizing, you know, maybe you're just going to need more than one drawing, maybe you need two drawings of the paper actually in its kind of flipping pose where it starts to uh, kind of flip over and see the back. And this is where I thought it was a little bit more interesting to kind of go with a darker value on the back of it so that it's very clear this whole kind of flipping animation that the front and the back are as contrasted as they could be. So just using white and black values to do that, I think is a fun way to, you know, kind of enhance the flow of the animation. And then as I'm going through, I'm cleaning up the drawings, but a lot of that basic, you know, positioning in there is starting to look pretty finished. So from here, you just kind of finish out your animation, get enough frames to get a nice dynamic exit on this piece of paper. I think once you get that loop-de-loop -loop feeling really fluid and really smooth, you've got a really great uh, kind of base asset. And then I'm gonna give it one more slow down before it exits. And when I do it, when, when I'm gonna try to slow it down this much, I'm not gonna redraw it. I'm just gonna duplicate the drawing and just move it over slightly because I wanna slow it down 
um, to a, a pretty substantial amount, right? So it was going really fast, and then that's going to feel like, you know, almost stuck in the mud. It's going to really, really slow down, but it'll just kind of give us one more chance to look at it before it, uh, you know, moves quickly again off screen. So just really trying to play into these arcs and, you know, get a dynamic feel. So really, really fast movements against slower movements. And so even after some pretty basic blocking, you end up with a pretty good uh, base asset here. We've got, you know, not that many drawings. Um, so it's in a really good space to actually go in, clean up some of the drawings, make sure that looks good. And then, you know, one thing we can do is add a pattern on top to really complete this kind of illustrated paper feel. And so I decided to do a really basic pattern that really, you know, is almost more like an icon of a piece of paper. So a kind of rectangle and then basically four lines in a similar pattern, one long and one short. And then I'm just going to go through and do that to each of the drawings. And it's really only going to be about half of the animation because the paper flips over. Um, but the other fun part about doing it this way is as this piece of paper is stretching, you can kind of change your drawing to match that and it's going to feel a little bit, bit more dynamic. So here, you know, the paper starts to curve. So I'm actually matching a little bit of that curvature in there of how the paper is folding. So I think that's a fun way to go about it. You could just duplicate the art and move it. I actually think that would probably take longer. And then as I'm going back through and, and seeing some of these frames, seeing how uh, crappy some of my drawings are and trying to clean that up. And then we end up with this, a really nice uh, base asset of this piece of paper. It's got some information on the front. It flips over. You know, you could change those colors, change those values, put some different, uh, put a different pattern on the back of it. Uh, but the next thing we can do is really kind of take advantage after we've cleaned everything up. And it actually is really important to try to clean up this base asset uh, as, as you can see, some of my drawings are pretty rough, so I need to really clean this up before I duplicate this layer and take this to, you know, having three pieces of paper. So once I feel really good about that base layer, we can simply duplicate that layer and then using the uh, edit all function here in our timeline. And if we say all frames, then we can just hit Q on the keyboard and manipulate uh, that entire animation. So we can rotate it and that's gonna give us a dramatically different feel. We can scale it up, and that's going to make the paper, you know, feel closer and larger. So that's gonna give it a really different feel. We can, you know, take it back down, rotate it. So once we have a really good looking uh, base asset, it's fun then to, you know, put more pieces, offset the timing by a couple of frames, and then you end up with something that feels uh, really, really interesting. And of course you could take this, you know, way past three copies, do a bunch of offsetting. You can really uh, do a ton with just that base layer. So that's the technique using the guides, using, you know, the principles of animation uh, and creating some great looking paper. So thanks for checking it out.